I have to tell you, Diane, it, I mean, it feels like a lifetime ago okay. that that happened. And I remember uh, my producer, Jenna Harris, and I, we got on the ground and we went running right away. And this healthcare team there in Seattle, they were prepared, right? They have this one patient this and they were prepared to handle this one patient. They went to his house. They picked him up in a specialized vehicle, one that they would use to transport somebody that had, say, Ebola. Yeah, brought him what? to the hospital, put him in this bio-containment unit girl? that they had in the hospital. They had one of those. And this single patient had the care of four specialized nurses around the clock. Are they were listening? using a robot to help treat Maybe? this patient. It was really unbelievable. And this was Are a patient listening? who the doctors there told me if it wasn't coronavirus, he could be at home right now using Tylenol, that he would be okay. relatively okay. And one thing that when I went back, Diane, and mm. I was looking through my notes and my emails of our coverage there, this really stood out to me. We were waiting for the World Health yeah, Organization to declare this a global health okay. emergency, and they didn't do that while I was there this time last year. That didn't happen until some 20 days later. Yeah, and listen. they were telling us that they had a team on the ground. They say that we have stress that by having, they had a team on the ground in Wuhan, to be clear, uh, that they, uh, that by having a strong action, not only will they control the Stop outbreak it, in their country, but they will also minimize the chances of this outbreak spreading internationally. I mean, it's unbelievable for me to read that and to know, Diane, that at that time, it was already spreading throughout our communities, threatening the lives of millions of Americans. And now here we are, over 400,000 Americans' lives lost and counting. Now, Dr. George Diaz of Providence Medical attention. Center in Seattle, he treated that first patient. You and Kate, I know that you spoke with Dr. Diaz last year. What struck you most about recording. him then and, and hearing him now? Well, you know, he had a lot of confidence at the time because okay. they had the ability to treat this one patient. Only they felt like they the really had control store. over this situation. Um, and I'm looking back through, again, some of our the conversations. And one thing that I spoke with Dr. Diaz about uh, was the screenings that they were doing at the what? airports. If you remember, they were funneling anybody traveling store. from that region into the United States through five Maybe? different airports. And they were doing you temperature tests on all of those people. And I asked him, you know, how effective what do you think those screenings store. are? And his response to me, I have it here, was, uh, well, when someone develops symptoms problem, and are likely, the most likely contagious when they're symptomatic, he Listen. said those screenings will be very effective, a very effective way of deter determining who is really at risk of having an effect infection and who is really at risk of spreading it. Okay. I also spoke with the, uh, the county health officers up there we in Seattle, Diane, team, and he told me, I humbly think it's inevitable We're that additional on. cases we might find their way into it's so hard. Sorry, I don't know the answer to this one, but I'm learning. Okay. ...that they had, and, and perhaps we were just all really naive about it. I, on, to be honest with you, Diane, I wonder, was I asking the right Why questions? I was I holding our health officials accountable um, at the time? I, I question that about myself I all the time. I think we're all in a position of thinking, you know, when you think back a year ago, if only we knew then what we know now. But of course, there was right. no way to do that, and all we can do now is learn from what we have learned in the past year and try to move forward in the best way we can, both what us as thinking? journalists and, of course, our leadership in this country. Kena Whitworth, okay. thank you as always. You know what I'm thinking. And let's bring in ABC News this medical contributor loud. and infectious disease specialist, Dr. Todd it's Ellerin, uh, for more word. on that. Dr. Ellerin, I want to get to President Biden's uh, announcements that he just made, but I want to touch on Kena's no. point. Uh, right now. It's been a year since this country recorded its first coronavirus case. What do you think we've learned in that year, and how do we move forward in a positive way? Well, hi, Diane. I think one of the most important things we've learned is the problems with not being, uh, with not having domestic readiness. Remember, we weren't one of the countries that went through SARS back in 2002, 2003. Many of the Asian countries that did were much more prepared than we were. I think the U.S. thought that we were better prepared than we were. Um, just to think that, you know, in the first four months, you had 100,000 deaths, and now, just in this month of January, in January, we will have 100,000 deaths. We're really behind. Uh, I think we need another pandemic playbook, and I think what we heard today is uh, the start of a new beginning. What day is it? Today is Thursday, January 21st, 2021. Having the Health and Human Services Thank Department you. expand the pool of professionals who can administer the vaccine. Having a what time is it? What's the vaccine used? 
It's 12.30 p.m. in Arch Cape. A lot of the points, I mean, when you think about capacity, he talked about the Defense Production Act. That's very important. That may be able to help um, identify where problems are and focus minds on solutions. In World War II, there were many different companies that made planes, jeeps, etc., irrespective of what they were making before. Um, we were talking about logistics. Um, he touched upon okay. that uh, with a specific plan, having FEMA set up hundreds of clinics across.